Welcome, all my fellow Washington brethren and sister. I am your man and resident Washington football team fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report. Quick breaking news, Washington signs left tackle Charles Leno Jr. to a one-year $5 million deal. We talked about the potential uh, opportunity for Washington to upgrade the left tackle position. A lot of us thought that after the drafting of second round pick Samuel Cosme in the 2021 NFL draft just a mere week and a half ago, that they were done upgrading the offensive line in terms of the tackle position in particular. Remember, they already brought back David Sharp, who they traded for last offseason right before the season got underway. You still have Cornelius Lucas under contract. You still have Jaron Christian under contract. You still have Morgan Moses under contract. So the impetus was this was the final move. Samuel Cosme, second round pick, going to play left tackle, going to have a chance to compete. If he doesn't win the job, they're going to defer back to the guy that was the starter at the end of last year in Cornelius Lucas, and that would be it. Uh, looks like they had other plans. Uh, there's a surprise cut by the Chicago Bears. Charles Leno Jr. becomes available. He's a left tackle. I'm assuming he wants to play left tackle. He probably was told by Washington the first time he came for the visit, because if you remember, we talked about on Thursday night, Charles Leno Jr. was coming for a visit. A lot of you also mentioned the safety uh, from the Dolphins was coming for a visit as well, um, and, and McCain. And so uh, neither one of those guys signed. And I think the reason why Charles Leno initially didn't sign was because Washington probably was very upfront with him. I, I'm pretty sure Ron, who's a very transparent guy, probably told him, look, you're not guaranteed anything if you come here. Uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to compete to start. And we do not have a penciled in left uh, tackle starter right now. So if you come in here, you're going to probably have a leg up on the competition because of your track record in this league. However, you're not guaranteed anything. Cornelius Lucas did a good job for us. You know him and you know you're going to be competing with him. You were the left tackle in Chicago. So if you know Cornelius Lucas's game and you feel confident that you can beat him out, you can come here and potentially be our starting left tackle. We drafted a guy in the second round, but we like him. We don't know if we love him yet. So he may need time to develop. If you come in here and you show us why you were a starter in this league for the last five, six years, then you'll be our starting left tackle. So he took that information, went to Denver. They said, look, we just had our right tackle go down. We got a left tackle that we just paid money to in Garrett Bowles. We're not looking to move him anywhere. So if you come here, if you sign a contract to play here, it's going to be at right tackle. And he's saying, well, I'm not a right tackle. I'm a left tackle. So he left Denver without a deal, came back to Washington, and he signed on the dotted line. So that tells me that he didn't necessarily love what he heard from Ron, which was, hey, we're not guaranteeing you the starting spot. We'll let you compete. And he said, okay, I'll be back. I'll keep that in mind. He went to Denver seeing what they were going to say. And they said, hey, we got a right tackle spot wide open. If you sign, you're, start, you're our starting right tackle. He said, but I'm not a right tackle. I'm a left tackle. They said, well, we can't help you there. We got a right tackle position open. So he comes back to Washington. And I'm thinking he's going to compete to be our starting left tackle. And if I had to guess right now, he's going to be the starting left tackle week one. Again, this is not an indictment on uh, the left tackle that we selected in the draft. Keep in mind, we see this throughout the league all the time. Teams draft guys that they think are the future at the left tackle position, but they don't start at left tackle year one. Again, Laramie Tunzel is a great example of that. He started at right guard his first year, then went to right tackle before ultimately getting to the left tackle position for the Dolphins. And uh, so th these things happen all the time. Okay, now Laramie Tunzel is uh, the, one of the better left tackles in the league for the Houston Texans after the trade that has netted the Dolphins uh, copious amounts of draft capital. But again, it's not uncommon to see a team say, hey, we think this is the left tackle of the future, but he may not be ready right now. So uh, if you're thinking about this in, in the, the spectrum of what does this mean for Samuel Cosme, well, he's going to come in and compete like everybody else. And who's to say that Samuel Cosme isn't the starting left guard when the season gets underway for all we know? nothing is set in stone on the left side of the offensive line. Keep that in mind. We don't know who's the left guard. We don't know who's the left tackle. We just know we got a bunch of stuff. And you should feel confident that they're going to put the five best guys on the field. And from center to right tackle, we pretty much know what's going on there, okay? 
So Chase Rouye is our center. Brandon Sheriff's our starting right guard. Morgan Moses is our starting right tackle. We know that for a fact with 100% certainty, barring any kind of catastrophes, okay? It's the left side of the line that we have a bunch of question marks about. But in unlike two, three years ago where it was a massive question mark and we were afraid that that position was going to undo our entire offense because we didn't have the players, the quality, nor the depth to, to, to speak of where we had to go out on the streets and go and sign a Donald Penn, okay? That's not where we are this time around. We have enough depth. We have enough quality players that feel that I feel confident, at least. I can't speak for any of you out there. That I feel confident that they're going to put two quality offensive linemen on the field at left tackle and left guard, and we're going to have the best five possible to start week one uh, more likely than not, if the, the reports are true, versus the Chargers at home to kick off the 2021 season. We'll talk about the schedule in all of its splendor. Uh, tonight, we'll be live on the Louis T. Network podcast. And tomorrow, we'll be more in-depth about the Washington schedule and anything um, other um, news, excuse me, any other news uh, regarding the Washington football team on Thursday night when we're live for the Washington football report live here on the Louis T. Network as usual. So, uh Real quick to recap, Charles Leno Jr., um, just to give you some background information, 2014, seventh round pick of the Chicago Bears. I remember doing my uh, draft wrap-up series and, and uh, watching him. He's evolved so much from the seventh round pick that was essentially a throwaway, a throwaway pick in that year's draft in 2020, uh, 2014 to now a quality NFL starting left tackle has been the entrenched left tackle starter for the Bears for probably the last five years, maybe even six to this point. So um, I signed a, a new contract with them about two or three years ago. This was a surprise cut, uh, but, but the Bears have been uh, chopping away at their roster because of the salary cap and uh, the implications from uh, the reduced uh, salary cap. The Bears have been one of those teams that have been hit really hard. They got rid of Kyle Fuller, which they didn't want to do. And I think this was another move that they really did not want to do in moving on from Charles Leno. But they did draft Tevin Jenkins, and that allowed them to be put in the position to move on from Charles Leno Jr., save themselves some room under the cap, and move forward with a younger, cheaper option we'll see if it works out for them but uh, their loss is potentially our gain that gives us more depth at left tackle a guy that's going to come in here really good athlete moves very very well probably the best athlete we have at the left tackle position now on the entire team uh, again Samuel Cosme to me is the best athlete that we have but if you're talking about athlete with experience that then goes to Charles Leno Jr. but Still relatively young, only 29 years old is Charles Leno Jr. So we'll see what happens. It's a one-year, $5 million deal if things work out. And again, we don't know what this means for Samuel Cosme. I'm not overreacting. I think this is just simply another guy to come in here and compete. Either he's the starter or he's a high-level quality backup that makes you feel really good. And if something were to happen like it did last year where the left tackle position is in flux because we've got injuries, you, it's really good to know that a guy like Charles Leno Jr. can step in and give us some really quality snaps uh, in the event that uh, the guy that starts the season isn't able to finish the season or isn't playing up to expectations. You've got a, a quality starting caliber tackle sitting behind that guy, whether it's Samuel Cosme, whether it's Cornelius Lucas or whatever the case may be. Uh, but if I'm a betting man, my money's on Charles Leno Jr. to be our starting left tackle when the season gets underway. So uh, that's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T. I thank you guys for joining me. Remember, if you haven't already done so, please make sure that you check out the uh, Ron's Plan t-shirt. Link is going to be down in the uh, comment section. I'm going to pin a comment where you can cop this shirt. Uh, also comes in burgundy. Okay. Also, if you haven't done so, like the video, subscribe to the Louis T. Network, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. With that said, I'm going to glide to the side and get out of here. Remember, I am a Washington fan etched in burgundy and gold. My watch the spirit will never die. Watch the spirit will never fold. Until we meet again, hail to our beloved Washington football team. Remember, tonight, schedule release uh, for all 32 teams. Louis T Network podcast is back like cook crack. I'll see you guys at 8.30p tonight. And then the following night, Thursday night, Washington football report live 8.30p. Looking forward to joining you guys and talking about 
the beloved Burgundy and Gold. Until then, I'm your man, Louis T, signing off. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.